Hey everybody, welcome back to Trending. Today is Thursday, September 26th, about 9.40 as we're recording. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, man. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. You got your Chiefs gear on. I'm ready, man. I got a new Chiefs jacket yesterday. Just feeling... Again, I said this last time. I'm just willing fall into existence. I think it's like high of 85 today. Is it? Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to bring it back on. down. Yeah, you know, just I don't know. I'm I'm doing my best, Gosh. playing my part to try to get it cooler outside. So. Well, we appreciate this. Kind of like people have, they have that superstition about washing their car. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, I yeah. wash my car today. It's gonna rain. Right. <laughs> yep. So if everybody just wore your pullovers and stopped washing your car, well, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> just start bringing Something in there. Whatever. Just get fall. <laughs> let's get fall started. It's almost October for crying out loud. So. <laughs> nice, dude. All right, well, hey, today's another uh, kind of fun episode for me because I, I only know a little bit about what we're talking about. Yeah. You, usually I kind of pick what we're talking about, but every once in a while you've got something on your mind. So this sure. is another Joe episode. Right. So what's what's turning today, Joe? Well, I'm going to demand that you give some communication theories. So you're not going to be totally off the hook. <laughs> okay. So you need to be on, you know, on the ready. But okay. um, so baseball season is getting close to playoffs. Okay. Uh, people are starting to, you know, clinch divisions or playoffs. Like mm-hmm. the San Diego Padres clinched a playoff spot with a triple play to end the game against oh, wow. the Dodgers. Wow. It was cool. Like, triple that it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. So it was kind of a neat way for them. Like, once first baseman caught it, like, everybody was going crazy. Yeah. Uh, it was a neat way for them to That's secure cool. their spot. Um, but uh, there is a very terrible team in baseball this year, unfortunately. Um, you know, Chicago, they <laughs> kind of deserve this. You know, they got two baseball teams in that one city. They can't both, you know, be good. Right. And right now they're both not very good. And... Um, I, I kind of despise the Cubs because they stole the Brewers' uh, manager, and I'm glad they're not making the playoffs this year, and the Brewers are. So anyways, <laughs> enough chirping. Let's talk about the White Sox. Okay, the White Sox. The White Sox right now have 120 losses, which is tied for the worst record in all of baseball history. I think there was a Mets team in the 60s that had 120 losses, and they've been sitting on 120 for a few days now. Okay. They actually won last night in extra innings. Wow. So they're like trying to once you're trying to will fall into existence. They're yes. trying to will into existence, not being the worst, the team, worst ever team ever in yeah. baseball. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Um, and so they they've been having some blue this has been a bad year for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. In fact, um, I think they lost like twenty five games in a row yeah. mid season. That's crazy. And uh, in the sports betting industry, I was trying to get, look up the stats, but someone like calculated if you started with a hundred dollars against them on that first game of their twenty-five game losing streak, yeah, and you just kept on like betting the winnings, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, compounded like it would have been like plus thirty-eight percent return on investment, wow, which is better than anything out there. Y- yes, if, if you could get that together, right? right. And so they've had a, a hard season, yeah. And uh, you can imagine uh, your spirits are down mm-hmm. there with the pale hose, uh, the White Sox pale hose. And so not everybody's like taking it so poorly. Yeah. Uh, in fact, their social media manager is having a good time with it. Nice. You have uh, to. It's laugh or cry, right? Those are your options. That's right. So they've decided to <laughs> embrace it and just to kind of go with it. So everybody's talking about this. Mm-hmm. But uh, on Twitter or X, uh, the official account of the Chicago White Sox, Okay. They were posting things like so. Like, I mean, a social media manager they post all day long for yeah. a team, mm-hmm. including how the game is going, yeah. and then a final score, mm-hmm. so that if people are following them, they can get the final score there. Well, a couple of days ago, so this must have been um, five days ago, um, that this is what the Chicago White Sox um, Twitter account said for their final score: final. The other team scored more runs than us. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Uh, the next one was final. The number of runs we scored was not greater than the number of runs they scored. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. I love and it. then finally, they're, just, they're sick of it. Uh, a few days ago, they said final can be found on the MLB app. <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't even want to post it. And so yeah. people are laughing. They're having a great time with this. Yeah. I thought it was kind of cool. And mm-hmm. I think it kind of points to how. Um, I know we're we're in a very performance driven society, mm-hmm. and um, there is this uh, temptation that when things are not going well, to spin it to yeah. not seem so bad, right? To kind of live in more of a sanitized world than mm-hmm. a real world, yeah. And so when you see people just kind of embracing both the wins and the losses yeah. at face value, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of cool, yeah. 
Uh, they're not in the spin room after a debate, you know, mm-hmm. trying to claim that their performance is better than it really was or, or anything like that. It was this refreshing yeah. thing. Like they just say, here it is in all of our glory. Right, right. Uh, or in all of our failures, this is who we are. Mm-hmm. And um, I just thought it was kind of cool. So I think we got to take this in a couple slices. So okay. slice number one is like, why would this be an effective communication tool for not just a baseball team, mm-hmm. not just for an organization, yeah. but for us personally? I think so. We need to lean on you. You've got more communication theory background. Um, and then I think we could talk about it f- another slice from a faith level. Okay. So you want to take the communication? Well, one? sure. But if yeah. I'm not mistaken, I think you're also a communications major. Well, I didn't so. I, I didn't do that from a master's. Okay. Series, All so, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't have anything too like uh, theoretical to point out. But I think it's just, um, especially in like kind of modern culture, it's just smart to be light with your communication, smart to have a little bit of humor. There's kind of a history of sports getting away with this more than other journalism. Okay. Like there, it's always kind of been true that sports writers can kind of have little puns in their headlines and little kind of fun things that wouldn't be professional for a news story, but it kind of, for because it's a sports angle, you can kind of wedge that in a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think people are tired of spin. They're tired of um, just, just facts except for things like this, especially if you know you're either really good or really bad. People know that already, so just embrace whatever side you're on. When you brought this up to me, one thing that it reminded me of was back in 2018. Do you remember the UMBC Golden Retrievers? No. They were at the, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County yeah. in the men's basketball tournament. Right. They were like a 16 seed or something right. like that. And they were, right. they were just plowing through the tournament. They were, they'd won several games they were supposed to lose. Yeah. Similar thing. Their social media account blew up. And so I, I started following them. They have... Se- almost 70,000 followers on Twitter, which for a school their size is like yeah. way more than they should have, right? That's right. But they did this kind of thing. When they when they kept on beating teams they shouldn't be beating, their social media were, it was just fun and funny and it was kind of embracing the, yeah, you've never heard of us before. Well, welcome. And hey, ESPN, we exist. And they just kind of embraced that and yeah. people followed it, right? Yeah. So I guess the only like communication thing I would say is just remember that people follow, people follow people, not brands, yeah. right? So like, if you represent a brand, make sure you have a personal voice and not just something so stiff and stoic because that's stuffy and people don't really care about that. But just in, infuse some humanity in your communication. That's always going yeah. to win out in the end. And I think this is if you're a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or whatever or any kind of communicator, right? Just a little bit of humor, a little bit of personality. People are going to pay attention to you way more than if you're just dry and yeah, you know, going through the facts, right? So and there certainly is an extreme, like uh, the yeah. whole airing of the dirty laundry. Um, I don't know if it's a fallacy or if it's just a, a dynamic that happens in our world where people mm-hmm. are just way too honest, maybe in the inappropriate times. Yes, and people can't wait to get away from that because they feel right. insanely awkward, mm-hmm. uh, even being there. Right? I uh, yep. feel like they're getting privy information and stuff that they haven't quite earned. Mm-hmm. Right? And so there's probably a a nice nice cushy middle that yes. would be most productive and uh, I guess it's more most healthy. Yeah. Um, this kind of reminds me of there's a famous scene in the Ted Lasso series where so just to kind of fill in the plot I mean if people have seen it they know that Nate was on mm-hmm. uh, Lasso's coaching staff he's got a he's a prolific soccer mind. Yeah. Uh, they have a falling out mm-hmm. and so he goes to a rival uh, rival soccer club and uh, is in the papers kind of bad-mouthing Lasso. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rebecca, the owner of AFC Richmond, she wants him to, like, she wants Lasso to go after him yeah. uh, at the next press conference. But he, mm-hmm. he doesn't. He turns it upside down. He's like, yeah. kind of turns it into a, kind of a sing-song gag mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. you know, I'm so dumb. And the, the press conference, how are you so dumb? And yeah, he yeah. begins to kind of just like live into it. And it is disarming mm-hmm. when somebody is not pretentious or prideful or arrogant or spin. Yeah, it's a kind of refreshing thing. Yeah, and we are entering into a season of, you know, people saying the most outrageous things to be noticed. Mm-hmm. Uh, the spin cycle is going to be ferocious in the next few months. Yeah, and so it is just, I think, refreshing for someone uh, or like for an organization uh, to say, you know what, we're gonna like live with levity instead. Yeah, uh, we're not going to lead with you know pride or arrogance or excellence. Uh, we're going to lead with levity. And it's humility too, right? I think humility is always attractive. So if you can kind of play on, yeah, we're horrible. Let's (laughs) poor White Sox, bring it on. That's who we are. Like it's kind of, it's it's endearing though, right? When people have kind of a 
you don't want to be so um, self-demeaning that it's, again, you don't want to, you can take this too far, but humility is always attractive, whatever field you're in, right? Yes. So. Yeah. So I'm working on a talk for Stan Firm um, mm-hmm. in a couple weekends, and uh, he wants me to talk about humility. Hmm. And so it reminded me of a G.K. Chesterton quote. There he is. So all we need is... Chalk it up. We just need Zeitgeist <laughs> and Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll hit our own we cycle. we got a few more minutes. That's so. right, yeah. So he said this, uh, and I'll throw it up on the screen. He said, humility is the luxurious art of reducing ourselves. Hmm. What a powerful statement. So lug- when I think of luxury or luxurious, I think yeah. like something that you get to experience that others don't get to experience. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. uh, a unique thing. Yeah. And you and I would think, no, like life can give us some hardships so all mm-hmm. of us will experience humility. Yeah. But I don't think that all of us choose even the hardship seasons of life mm-hmm. as a way to be humble. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, uh, you look at a parallel story like the Oakland A's in the base, baseball world, they are, they've been horrible for years, mm-hmm. and uh, they're going to probably relocate um, mm-hmm. after this season. And uh, their organization told their fans, once the last game is over, you must get out immediately. Like they're, they're not allowing oh, wow. people even to linger and huh. to remember the good old days. Mm-hmm. Like they're closing the doors. Like they're almost like trying to put it behind them as quick as possible and yeah. turn the page. And maybe that's effective. Maybe that's important for them. But there is something about choosing to be humble and not to live in denial yep. that I think is um, a good medicine for the soul. Yep. And so I think Ch- Chesterton's idea of luxurious art of reducing mm-hmm. ourselves. Yeah. I think it's an important reminder. Yeah, I agree. I feel like we, kind of our stick is we weave in Bible and spiritual stuff, right? So, of course, I don't want to, there's a lot of obvious parallels to Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, there's a lot of verses about, you know, coming to earth as a human and taking the, coming to, what's the Philippians 2? I'll, I'll put it the on The kenosis hymn. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so obviously, there's a lot of Jesus parallels with this, right? Just yeah. the humility part of it. But is there another kind of Bible story or lesson so, that you can pull out of that? Yeah, so one that I always am amazed by is when Jesus goes to visit Zacchaeus. All right, hmm. Zacchaeus, he had to, so Jesus calls him uh, a son of Abraham. Yeah. So yeah. he probably was uh, from the Jewish people. Um, I think nearly every Christian was for the first, you know, several mm-hmm. years of the movement. Yeah, but to he he seems like he's been stealing, you know, from his fellow Israelites as a tax collector. Mm-hmm. You would regularly charge a higher rate so that you can kind of get a cut off. That was kind of like your commission. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I'm sure that uh, people who grew up with Zacchaeus uh, mm-hmm. had nothing but terrible things to say about him. I'm sure yeah. if he was walking down the road, people avoided him. Mm-hmm. Maybe just because they didn't want to pay their tax bill, but also because he was a disgrace to their society. Mm-hmm. So Jesus comes to his hometown. And uh, out of all the people, Jesus says, I want to stay at your Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. And we have no idea, no idea what they talk about. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could have talked about like phosphorus. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but for a few days, he and Jesus spend some time together. And Zacchaeus' response is, I'm going to give back mm-hmm. large sums of money. Yeah. And something to note there, like he doesn't give like verbatim what he's stolen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but up to four times. Yeah. Like he's got this like, you know, exuberant response. Mm-hmm. I want to give it like half my wealth, four times what I've taken. Yeah. And Jesus' response is not, do Zacchaeus, don't go overboard here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, you know, don't be a spaz. Right. He's like, no, salvation has come to this house mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because he too is a, you know, son of Abraham. Yeah. And he says, this is the reason the son of man came was to seek and save that which was lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I just think, um, when we understand the depth of our brokenness mm. and truly embrace this generous grace of Christ, yeah, um, I think it does pro- provoke great humility mm. in our life. Yeah, and it's not humility to try to be impressive, but mm-hmm. it's no like I've understood that I've got a new lease on life now. Yeah, and I want to live differently, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and because of that, um, I think there's great opportunity ahead. Yeah, because I've kind of gotten it all off the, my chest. I've mm-hmm. laid down the burden. Yeah, and now we can start over. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what we see so most vividly in the story of Zacchaeus. Yeah, no, that's yeah. good. Yeah. One thing that I I wish was different about the Bible. I think over the years, there's so many things in the Bible. I think we've just kind of um, we've read a certain way, and I wonder if in real life when they really happened, if they were a little bit different from how that we read them today. So what I mean by that is, 
I think there's a lot of instances where Jesus or Paul or maybe even like David were actually kind of sarcastic. Like they had a sense of humor. Yes. Like they were humans and they, they had little things that in oh, their yeah. culture would have been little zingers, kind of like the mm-hmm. White Sox Twitter, yes. um, where I think we kind of sanitize them. We, yeah. we assume because it was Jesus or Paul or David, it's yeah. kind of this holy yeah. language, right? Yeah. But I think... If we were in the culture at the time, it would we would have understood little smart little zings that those guys were using, yeah, right? Yeah. So I, I've got a couple in my mind, but I feel like I don't know the context well enough. Do you have any examples of that where sure. if we knew the culture, it'd be like, oh, I see what you're doing there. Like that's a little play on words, or that's a sure. little. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, Jesus spoke truth to power in many ways. Uh, his opponent, both he and John the Baptist, called his opponents broods. A brood of vipers, right. which is kind of like a first century mama joke. It also had a very serious, con- serious connotation, too. I read this recently. I guess when viper uh, babies are born, they can at times be so aggressive that they harm their parents. And that mm-hmm. was like kind of a, an indictment of on okay. this, that current class of leaders yeah. is like completely shattering the tradition of their people mm-hmm. um, for their own profit and gain. Yeah. Um, Jesus calls Herod a fox. Yeah. Um, and yeah. he doesn't seem to be too worried. Mm-hmm. But you're right. I mean, so there's one uh, guy named Tim Stevens. Um, he yeah. used to work, I think, at Granger, Granger Church. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. he wrote a book called Pop Goes to Church. Yeah. And he talked about how pop culture and even Christian theology has mixed. He has this interesting theory that uh, Jesus probably would have been a builder. He it means he probably would have built in Sepphoris, which was a day's walk from Nazareth. Okay. So it have been the most steady income that he could have had during hmm. his lifetime because it was this neat city that was built there. Yeah. And they had a great play uh, presence there, like performance. Oh, okay. And so uh, Stevens is actually, he probably got this through his seminary training, but he has these references where like Jesus probably would have picked up some lines from Greco-Roman play culture. Okay. So he was probably, Jesus could have quoted movie quotes, yeah. just like all your favorite people, you know, yeah. at the lunchroom. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And so, yes, obviously uh, we want to, uh, church work is serious and it's holy business, mm-hmm. but it's also done in zip codes. Yeah. Right. And so we've just got to imagine mm-hmm. that um, over and again, many times there would have been these references that would come up and what I loved about Diane DeFranco cling at Sterling, mm-hmm. when we were like covering Shakespeare, mm-hmm. uh, she would tell us, like, this would have been the funniest thing in Shakespeare Day. Like, make yeah. sure you laugh at this, you know? Right, right. And we didn't know because we're so removed from that culture. I think it's the same mm-hmm. with Bible reading. Yeah. yeah. That's why we need scholarship, not just to kind of keep our, our belief system straight, mm-hmm. but also because it does kind of bring this texture to the text that uh, we would just miss because our, mm-hmm. our language is kind of incomplete yeah. uh, over and against the ancient languages of the text. So, yeah. yeah. That's where I wish we could hear or at least understand more of that side of Jesus. Like we know, obviously full of love. He wants to hang out with the little kids like yeah. that, that side of Jesus, which came through a little bit clearer in scripture. Cause I believe that's who he was or who he is. Yeah. And the and, chosen teases this stuff. Yeah. Out. So right. if you're like watching chosen, like you're probably getting at least some of their license to mm-hmm. like give Jesus some a little more humanity. Yeah. And uh, I just, the little that I've seen, cause we haven't been able to get all through it, all the way through it. I just, I've, I just am so impressed and yeah. so thankful right. that uh, they're giving Jesus this treatment. And yeah. um, it's been kind of a good thing for my own personal faith, too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I think it's good for us in whatever communication we do to be true to ourselves, be humble. And I think it's just the world's heavy, right? It's always heavy. So yes. infuse some humor and some lighthearted. Like yes. That's always going to be better for communication. So. Something that I've enjoyed, speaking of levity, um, there's a group of students at Liberty University. This has been okay. my favorite thing the past two weeks. Okay. So I'll I'll show maybe a video clip you could put up there, but they are uh, there's this tall light post, okay, in their like quad area, <laughs> with a little spire spike on top. It's like okay. 25 feet in the air, okay. And these guys are taking like a pear from the lunchroom and trying to <laughs> skewer it, like throwing nice. up there under yeah. and skewering it on there. And they finally got it yesterday, oh, and nice. it was the best thing. Oh, that's uh, awesome. So anyways, but yeah, once again, levity. Honesty. Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. kind of a fun thing. So like if we could just keep living like we all lived in college, right? Like I feel uh, like college is peak levity's time in most people's lives. That's right. Let's bring it back. Yes. It's a good way to live. That's right. Absolutely. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Well, uh are you do you want the the White Sox to win? Or are you hoping they become the worst team? Like what are you rooting for oh, at this point? Yeah. In the I guess like as a sports fan, you do want to see history unfold before your eyes so you can say i was there yeah but this is a hard one man yeah um and there's a couple guys like former royals that are on there mm-hmm. andrew benintendi okay one of the best last names in baseball yes. it's like for their sake i hope that they yeah don't get there so there's a few days left hopefully they can keep a win streak going and nice and just be tied for the worst record no. there you go yeah history before our eyes yeah so <laughs> white Sox, 
good luck. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> and the social media manager, way to go. That's way right. To, to That's some fun. right. Kudos. Like so, okay, well, let's wrap it up there. Thanks so much for all of you who are watching and listening. Of course, we'd love to have you Sunday next week. Uh, Andy speaking this week as we wrap up our Sabbath rest rhythm series. So, love yep. to see you there. Yep. And we'll be here next week. Yep. All right. See Happy you next weekend. Time. See yep. you.